Hi everyone, welcome back to Mad Barn Academy. If you're new here, welcome. We hope to earn your subscription today. And as always, we appreciate and thank you for your support. I'm Dr. Fran Rowe, one of the veterinary nutritionists here at Mad Barn. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing a topic that was a special request, shout out to Patricia, progressive ethmoid hematoma. If you have a topic you'd like to see covered in a future video, comment below. Okay, so let's get started. So an ethmoid hematoma is a non-cancerous or benign mass of the nasal cavity and or paranasal sinuses. To break that down a bit, it's a hematoma, a blood-filled mass that originates from the ethmoid turbinates, which are located in the very back of the horse's nasal passage. The ethmoid turbinates communicate with the nasal passage and the surrounding sinuses in the head. In this graphic, the ethmoid turbinates are the pink fan-shaped structure. The ethmoid turbinates are thin scroll-shaped bones in, uh, covered in respiratory epithelial cells. This tissue is highly vascular, meaning there's a large concentration of, of small blood vessels. And the primary job of the ethmoid turbinates is to clean, warm, and humidify the air that's breathed in. The cause of ethmoid hematoma is largely unknown. However, we understand that for some reason, a small bleed occurs within the tissue that's covering the ethmoid turbinates, which causes the tissue to balloon and form a hematoma. Instead of resorbing and going away, which would be normal, the tissue becomes thickened and instead forms a capsule. So depending on where the hematoma forms on the ethmoid turbinate, the mass can expand into the nasal cavity and or the surrounding sinuses. In this graphic, the ethmoid turbinates are label six, the gray fan-shaped structure, and the sinus cavities are in red and blue, and I've uh, listed their names uh, on this slide if you're interested. Even though these aren't cancerous masses, they are locally invasive and destructive as they grow, meaning that they can destroy the bony architecture of the nasal cavity and sinuses as they expand over time. So the literature is a little bit inconsistent on demographics. It just depends on um, the, the paper that you read. But ethmoid hematomas are thought to occur most commonly in male, middle-aged thoroughbreds. However, they have been reported in many, many other breeds, drafts, warm bloods, light breeds. And the age of diagnosis can really range, I think, anywhere from, you know, three years old to into the 20s, really. The prevalence in hospital populations is estimated to be about one in 2,500 horses, which means it's very likely that's, that it's even less frequent in the general population. And additionally, ethmoid hematomas account for around 4% of horses with sinus disease. So overall, this is not a particularly common issue in horses. In many cases of ethmoid hematoma, owners will simply report a small trickle of blood or blood staining from one or both nostrils. Often, blood in the nostrils is intermittent, meaning that it comes and goes. If the mass extends into the nasal cavity itself and begins to kind of block the normal flow of air, owners may also report a new onset respiratory noise. Less common clinical signs include um, kind of malodorous breath, facial swelling, head shyness, and head shaking, but it's variable. So to investigate the cause of blood coming from the nostrils or a new respiratory noise, the veterinarian will most likely um, start with scoping the upper airway and taking radiographs of the skull to try and figure out where that blood is coming from or where that noise is coming from. On endoscopy, ethmoid hematoma is suspected when a mass is seen originating from the ethmoid turbinates. The color of these masses can range from reddish, purplish to even gray, green, yellow. It, it, it varies. 
And then radiographs may also show a soft tissue mass originating from the ethmoid region and extending into nearby sinuses. So in some cases, though, the, the hematoma grows into a sinus that cannot be visualized with endoscopy or radiographs. And in these cases, advanced imaging like CT or MRI may be necessary to, to, to determine the location of that mass and its extent. For a definitive diagnosis, meaning to, to be confident that's an ethmoid hematoma and not some other type of mass like a cancer, the mass can be sent for histopathology, so that tissue can be looked at under the microscope. The that might be a biopsy if the, of the mass prior to surgery, or if the horse goes to surgery um, right off the bat, then that entire mass can be submitted for histopath. So while ethmoid hematoma is not generally considered a life-threatening disease, it can limit performance and lead to secondary airway and sinus complications if left untreated. There are two main treatment options today, the first of which is intralesional injection with formalin. So this procedure is best performed on small masses and is really only an option if the mass is accessible via endoscope. So for this procedure, the mass is going to be injected repeatedly at frequent intervals with formalin until it resolves or can no longer be injected. The time between injections is usually going to be two to four weeks. One case study listed five injections as their mean, but it ranged from one to 18 injections. Of course, the goal is going to be complete resolution of the mass with treatment. However, recurrence can occur and remission rates have been reported anywhere between you know, less than one year to nearly two years, um, just depending on the horse, depending on the case. The other option for treatment is surgical excision or surgical debulking. This option is best for horses with a very large mass or those that can't be accessed via endoscope. And then certainly if, you know, formalin injections fail the first go around and the mass recurs, then surgical removal might be the next option. Additionally, cryotherapy or laser ablation can be used in conjunction with surgical removal. So surgery can be done either standing or under general anesthesia uh, through a sinus flap, which is this picture here. Uh, this is a closed sinus flap after, after the surgery is complete. And that sinus flap allows the surgeon to gain access into the sinus. Recurrence in these cases is, is variable. It depends on the completeness of excision. Not surprisingly, a mass that's unable to be completely excised is more likely to return. Okay, you guys, that's it for today. References, and I really appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you like this video, like and subscribe and check back for more videos in the future. Until next time, thanks.